Um, yeah, I was still working with uh, uh, CJ. Um, other than that, Morgan's out. CJ going to be work out before the game? Uh, we should have. A, we, we should know by the end of today whether or not uh, he's even uh, going to push to see if we can get a workout on, on, on Sunday. So, like, it, like the injury report says, he's doubtful, but uh, he's trying to get that thing ready to roll. He's not going to practice today? Uh, we're going to see how he feels. How much did you guys benefit from having a traditional week of practice? I mean, I know it's still early in the season, but you short week after week one and then another short week. No, that, 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 that's a good question, especially coming off of the Thursday. You know, we had a, a full speed Wednesday. We put pads on yesterday and had a, uh, a big long practice. And, uh, and we'll have another full speed red zone day today. So it, um, this is really the first week since uh, before the San Francisco game that we were able to actually practice at full speed. So um, it was very beneficial. Thought we had a really nice practice yesterday. Um, and uh, hopefully it continues. Is Mike Williams now all the way back? No restrictions, or is he still on a little bit of a pitch? Um, he's he's definitely part of the rotation. I, I don't want to say there's a pitch count on him anymore, but um, but with the way we're, we're we're kind of in a flow with our personnel groupings and getting guys in and out of the huddle, um, uh, he'll continue to get a bigger and bigger role as he gets comfortable with the offense and the quarterback. Robert, what are you seeing the most uh, week by week progression offensively and with Aaron in particular? Um, you know what. Uh, I'll be honest. The first week, I thought we executed well. We just couldn't get him the ball, you know, um, from a time possession standpoint. The second week, I know we started slow, um, but there there showed a lot of uh, there was a lot of promise. Um, it's like I said, it was different. You know, you there was a, the inconsistency of the offense was it was either three and out or twelve play drive, which as a coach, like I kind of like that it's twelve play drive and not a three and out, three and out, three and out explosive play. That, that happens randomly. You can always count on explosive drives but, or ex- explosive plays, but you can count on the efficiency of 12, 10, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 play drives. Um, and so it's just a matter of being able to um, get a little bit more consistency throughout. Not that every single drive is going to be multiple, um, multiple plays, but uh, to answer your question, though, it's just the, the efficiency of it all has always been there. It was great last week to see it happen every series. But specifically, I mean, Aaron himself has talked about how he, like, there's little things that he's been doing week by week that are showing him he still has it, you know, so to speak, you know, just the way he scrambled around on Thursday. And, you know, are you, are you seeing that as well? You know, are you seeing that, that guy that you knew, you know, and watched a couple of years ago um, as, he's, as he's kind of un, unpacking things, if you will? Yeah, it was... Um, like I said, during training camp, it was all there. You guys, you guys were all saw him running around. So it's really for him. Um, I would stand in front of him and say, physically, he's ready to roll. Uh, it's just mentally, he's got to get through hurdles. He's human, and uh, and I think with every passing day and every every extra rep he gets, especially from a game day, uh, game day standpoint, um, he's getting more and more confidence in himself and his uh, and what his body's still capable of. So. Um, we all know that uh, that he has it in him still, and uh, and I think for him, it's just those affirmations that are allowing him to build some confidence. You mentioned with Mike Williams the getting to the quarterback. How how behind was he? Because he didn't practice last spring. He didn't practice for the first whatever three weeks of camp. So how you know how how much did he? Go fall behind with that chemistry. You, you lose a lot, you know. You don't. He, he. You think about what his first practices were. Um, they were really just kind of getting him reps, right? Uh, then it really didn't start happening until after the Giants game. So, you know, he's he's lost three months of OTAs. He's lost all the training camp, and it's. But at the same time, I will, you know, give him give him credit. Going to every single meeting, uh, being a part of every walkthrough, and. Uh, uh, being a part of every single conversation, so at least he doesn't have to go through that uh, to get caught up. It's more just getting reps, full speed reps, routes on air, um, and and understanding what the quarterback likes to do based on certain looks, based on leverages, and all that stuff, and where the quarterback's going to put the ball. Um, so it's just a matter of getting getting reps right now. You guys are going up against JFM with, with Denver. Um... What have you seen from your guys and, and how they've replaced you know, what, what he meant to that defensive line? Um, 
you know, J JFM, um, you know, he's such a cool story. Uh, got a lot of appreciation for, for him. You know, he uh, uh, obviously gets cut from, from uh, he get, I think there's a third round pick, gets cut from the Rams, comes here. He's kind of hanging on by a thread, and, and we show up and don't know him from anything. And he, uh, and he attacked every single day, and he turned into a, a, a big part of our defense, um, a genuine leader. Um, and somebody we we look to as a guy who was basically the ambassador of, of violence for our for our defense. Um, so a lot of love for JFM and a, and big shoes to fill. And uh, and I think our guys have done a great job. You know, uh, you know the the D line and to his credit, he was a part of it. Created a standard and an expectation for everybody in that room, regardless of who's in there. And uh, and I think he's um, you know the the things he. Esta helped establish in his first couple of years. It's definitely carried on to the rest of the group. Is there a new ambassador of violence? You know what? Uh, we'll see. I don't, I don't know if I've given that one out yet. There's there's ambassador of strains. You know, when we lost Shep, big Shep dog, I thought we lost our ambassador of strain, but uh, Sally uh, has, has gladly taken that torch. Is obviously a small sample size, but what have you seen out of Bo Nix so far? Uh, Bo is a—he's uh, going to be a really good football player. Uh, not that he's not already, but um, you know he's a gritty, gritty kid. Um, uh, very mobile, can create off schedule, quick decision maker. You know he's—he is smart with the football. I know he's got the—I think he's got four uh, uh, interceptions, but um, you know you from game one to two to three. Those interception-worthy passes have gone down significantly. Um, they do a great job running the ball, and um, they do a great job of not asking him to, to 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 be the hero every play. But when he's asked to be the hero, he's making it happen. Especially last week. So he's um, he's a, he's he's got tremendous arm talent. He's got tremendous uh, mobility. He's got, like I said, good processing ability. Uh, very good processing ability, um, and he's definitely going to be a good football player. With his mobility and the RPOs, do you have to adjust the angles you use when you blitz, or do you just just status quo? It, it's a, it's still status quo. Your uh, your gap discipline's uh, um, you know you rush a level of quarterback. It, it's all the same principles regardless of who the quarterback is. Um, you always got to be conscientious of where they are in the pocket and uh, um, and not be uh, undisciplined with regards to your rush lanes to because even the the slowest of slow can get out of the pocket if you're not disciplined. We've won uh, in a couple different ways the last two games. How important is it to keep this thing going with an expectation? You know, I know you're just looking at, at Sunday, but just to get a little run going in this league, teams can kind of get, get going that way. And, and this is an opportunity you're at home against a team. No, no for sure. It's, it's week to week. You, you guys know that. And uh, not the answer you want, but our, our moment is this moment. And, um, and this moment requires us to be great on Friday. And then we'll deal with tomorrow, tomorrow, and we'll deal with Sunday, Sunday. Can you speak about, about Chuck, Can you speak about uh, Chuck Clark's progression? Obviously, you missed last year, but he, he seems to be coming yeah. on each week and then really couple splash players against the past. Yeah, he's. Uh, you can put him in Aaron's category. I know he doesn't get as much attention. He's not the quarterback, but hadn't played football in over a year. Had a, a significant lower uh, uh, leg uh, injury, and so there's a. Um, uh, a comfort, I mean, uh, uh, mental barrier. He's got to get through uh, a speed element uh, where he get he gets his legs still needs to get his legs underneath him. Um, and with every passing week, he's gotten better. So, um, fully expecting him to continue to, to to get better as as weeks go on. But um, it's good to see him having some production. When we spoke to Aaron on Wednesday, he talked about dealing with prosperity as a team. Right? He said, you know, sometimes it's easier. When it's us against the world, and we're saying no good, and now you guys are starting to hear some nice things after Thursday about the team. How do you manage that as a coach, and just kind of keep them from listening to that? Um, you you just got to recall the last few years. You know, it's um, and like I said, it's it's owning our moments. Uh, um, euphoria and disaster is that Bill's uh, quote. I mean, it's you you. you it's play to play around here, you know. So it's just stay focused in the moment, do the best you can, um, ignore the noise because the noise is always going to be extreme, and you never want to overreact. You want to properly react, and uh, and whether you win or lose, there's always going to be a, a a proper reaction to what you see on tape, and that's the way we got to attack it. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're recognizing Buddy Krumenacher uh, from Farmingdale High School in, uh, out, uh, out in Long Island. Uh, he led his team to a 14-6 uh, win, his 300th career victory. Uh, he's uh, graduated from uh, Farmingdale back in 1965, been there since 1993. Um, they're currently 2-0, and man. God bless you. Best of luck the rest of the season to, to, the entire, to him and the entire football team.